Would you like to know some of the steps it would take to become a first generation cash flow millionaire? Well, I was invited to a small company private event in Austin, Texas, and sharing to them the mindset of a millionaire. So in, in this episode of the Seven Fears Squad, I'm going to share with you some of those steps. I shared seven steps, but I'm going to share three of those steps here with you in this episode, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And listen, I just want to get right into it. Um, step number one here is you got to build your identity. If you want to become a first generation millionaire, getting your head game right, you got to build your identity. Many of you, just like myself, started with a language of money called brokenese. We didn't learn the words of millionaires. That's why we hear we may hear opportunities around us, see opportunities around us, but we don't recognize them. We don't understand them. Why? We just don't have the vocabulary to understand millionaires. We understand brokenese. So we need to expand our vision and comprehension of what it takes to make a million bucks and keep a million bucks. Let's check this out. And so when we're talking about uh, being a first generation cash flow man, a couple things here is how do you get there? Do you want to get there slow? Or you want to get there fast? All right. Success loves speed. So let's talk about that real quick. Seven steps. Here's seven steps to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. It's probably starts with this right here. Get your mind right. What am I talking about? Get your mind right. Listen, before uh, PHP agency, I served eight years in the Marines. I was recruited out of a neighborhood in Chicago called the Berwyn Cicero Stickney area, uh, lower middle class uh, type area. The biggest celebration that one would have in that neighborhood is actually graduating high school. Majority of people in my, in my, uh, my neighborhood didn't graduate high school. And here I am, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm first generation uh, born America, but our family's from the Philippines. So that means my mom is a what? A nurse, correct, right? So that means my mom's a nurse and my dad was trying to look for odd jobs. And by the stereotype is funny because the stereotype is true. <laughs> oh, by the way, aren't you, aren't you happy that we got, uh, oh, well, I even, I'm not gonna even announce that because I'm about to let a cat out of the back here real quick. But uh, anyway, back to, the, back to my mom being a nurse, okay? They said, go to school, get good grades, Right? So they can get a job, so you can be secure the rest of your life. And their equivalent to that was coming to America because that was the land of promise and land of milk and honey. Right? Because in the Philippines, many people leave the Philippines as doctors to come to America just to be nurses, and they make more money here. Okay, that's a, that's a sad reality of the Philippines. Philippines, listen, Philippines went, uh, went kind of crazy the last uh, eight, nine, ten years ever since the new president took over. His name is President Duterte. And uh, his policy on drugs, he says, there's a war on drugs. You know what he does? If he finds you using drugs or selling drugs on the street, guess what they do? They just shoot you. Done. Straight up. No, no trial. No, no arrest. They just straight up blast you in the street. Okay? And so it causes, it's caused an overpopulation of crowding in, in the jails, and a lot of people are, are freaked out. Uh, Philippines is, is a funny country. A lot of people leaving the country, as you, as you can imagine. But when I'm talking about get your mind right, the reason why I'm sharing all this is you were probably raised in a neighborhood that didn't have a lot of cash flow, first generation millionaires either, right? So it's, uh, oftentimes people say, hey, you know, Matt, you know, my life wasn't perfect. I'm like, welcome to PHP then. <laughs> if their life was perfect, you would have been, I don't know, Wall Street, you would have been in Silicon Valley, you would have been, right? You, you've been in Harvard or Yale and you've had a, a upstart and a head start. You had all those different, you had a family member give you a million dollars to start your little business, right? If your life was perfect, but your life ain't perfect. That's why you're a PHP. So, so if you feel that your life wasn't perfect, raise your hand if you didn't have a perfect life. Any imperfect people here? Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you're in the right spot, right? And so with that being said, with that being said, we are brought up with a lot of things that anchor us to broke beliefs. Okay, uh, uh, probably the most successful person that you just saw was somebody that had a steady job. Okay, depending on how you looked up to, you probably uh, you looked up to somebody that uh, that sadly was making illegal type of money, right? How many guys know what uh, 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 the, the fancy words pirating? But how many of y'all know what bootleg is? Bootleg DVDs, bootleg CDs, right? How many of y'all know bootleg, right? 
When Ray Ray came in, hey, yo, you got the new movie? Yeah, it's bootleg. He ripped it, right? He's sitting in the movie theater with the camcorder, <laughs> recording the whole daggone thing, and he rips it to the DVD and sells it to you for five bucks. There's bootleg, right? Um, and some of y'all were raised on uh, some drinks, not like Champagne. Is that the right way to say champagne? Champagne, that's why there's a G in there. Champagne, you weren't raised with Ors de Ovoirs, right? When you walked into a party, right? When you walked into a party and they told you six o'clock, what time did you really show up to a family party? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, yeah. yeah. That's the type of party you, you know, are raised in, right? And so when you're looking at wealthy people, when they say the party starts at six o'clock, you know the sad part about it? Party starts at six o'clock. If you got that at eight o'clock, it's over, the food's gone, everybody's packing up and going home. It's a great part about it. It's funny, because I, I started making a little bit of money, because after the military, I stumbled across the insurance industry. And I was prospected in Southern California. Jason, you know uh, Orange County right there, uh, Lake, uh, Lake Forest exit in Lake Forest, California? Uh, right there off Oso Parkway in California, off the five. I, got, I, I, I was going to a Best Buy, because I started taking pictures of my then son, who's now 25 years old, but he was one, two years old. I just came back from the deployment, I take some pictures, and I wanted to email them to my mom. Those I didn't say, I would message them to my mom. I wanted to email to my mom with my AOL disk because I had 15 free hours of the internet. <laughs> okay, I'm dating myself. Some of you guys are laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Gen X in that house. <laughs> and so when, I, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about how to send this to my mom the fastest way, I think I need to buy a scanner. And why? Uh, and, and why? Because I, I'm going to go down to Walgreens, pick up my pictures that had to be developed in an hour express. Because back in the day, you had to take film. These days, you know, I got to take film. Anyway, I'm, I'm completely like embarrassing myself right now. But that's the process of, uh, of us taking pictures back in the day. We're talking about late 90s, okay? So I go down to Best Buy. I'm looking to buy a scanner. And my boy's like, Poppy, I got to go to the bathroom. I take him to the bathroom. I walk into a bathroom. There's a guy there. Fellas, let me ask you, man rule. If you don't know the guy in the bathroom, you don't, I didn't even finish the sentence, you already knew the rule. <laughs> hey, ladies, if you see another lady, is it okay to start a conversation with a lady? Yes. Fellas? <laughs> anyway, this guy starts a conversation with me. I'm like, oh, what's up, man? Hey. My boys are taking, I'm going to do, doing the business, right? Hey, you a Marine? I said, yeah. <laughs> And then he says, I could tell by the way you walk, not good. <laughs> he, might, he must be looking at my, you know what I'm talking about? He says, yeah, I'm a Marine, man. He says, no, 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 don't get me wrong. And he holds up his planner. He made, back in the day, people held planners. You know, a planner, like your calendar, your appointments in there. He holds up the planner. In the back of his planner was a Marine, Corps, a Marine Corps emblem, Marine Corps logo, Eagle, Globe, and Anchor. Boom, he's a Marine. Oh, hey, no prop. Hey, hey, double dog. He says, uh, yeah, I'm a retired master sergeant. So let me ask you a question. What are you gonna do? You gonna stay in or are you gonna get out? I said, nah, I'm gonna be a lifer. It's not like I was, in, I was in prison, right? I'm gonna be a lifer. That's how, that, by the way, that's a lot, the way a lot of Marines talk. I'm gonna do this for my boys. I'm a lifer. I'm gonna do my 20. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, means two, I'm gonna do my 20 years so I can retire. And since I uh, enlisted at 17 years old, I went into boot camp at 17. I took 18 years old in boot camp. I would retire at a nice young age of 37 years old. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm 22 years old, 23 years old right now. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, do this for another, you know, 12 years, and I have a pension for the rest of my life. That's military thinking. That's not millionaire thinking. So I'm talking about getting your mind right. So he prospects me in the bathroom of a Best Buy, and thank God, he exchanged information with me, and he followed up. Sometimes people gather prospect information, but they don't what? Follow up. But for three months... I held his business card in my breast pocket, my uniform. I wanted to call him every day, because I was curious. Because the, the thing he uh, 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 shared with me is, hey, you want to get involved in the money game? I'm like, yeah. How? I'll show you the ropes. Are you sure? Me? No college degree? I just filed bankruptcy in 1996 in Orange County, Chapter 7 bankruptcy. This is 1999. Are you sure you want me? No business background, no sales background. I don't know nothing about insurance. I could barely spell the word N -n 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 T. <laughs> I thought a 401k was like a long race. <laughs> Bro, 400, 1,000 miles, hot damn. Okay, let's get started. 
And so I'm thinking to myself, I'd like to get, it sounds good, I'd like to get involved in money business, but I'm so limited. I like to work with my hands. See what the guy said, that's what a lot of guys said. I work with my hands. Anyway, he follows up with me. Picks up the phone, I picked up, hey, so Paul, you got a phone. Got a phone call. Sergeant Sapala speaking, I'm gonna help the sermon. Hey, is this uh, Matt Sapala? Yeah, who's this? Yeah, this is Carlton, the guy that met you in the bathroom of the Best Buy. <laughs> Holy moly, I'm thank, thank God you called me, man. I've been thinking about you for the last three months straight. Yeah, I was asking around base. I you know, was searching your name on base and I finally found you. I'm gonna be in base housing later. I'm gonna visit some buddies. You mind if I stop by? Sure. He stops by my house. Now, I'm making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. How many times have you seen an objection of people telling you, uh, I love to do this, but I ain't got the money? It's bull crap. Because I, I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines with two kids, going through a divorce, single dad. My paycheck every two weeks was 850 bucks every two weeks. But, but was, the sergeant in the Marines, combat experience, two, every two weeks, 850 bucks direct deposit. If I, if I show you my bank accounts from 1998, 1999, you see an extra $200 going into my bank account. What's that from? Paycheck advance. I'd have to have those, you know, those paycheck advance things. I'd have paycheck advance because I, I couldn't live on 850 bucks every two weeks. Anyway, he gets me involved in the life insurance industry. And then for the next 12 years, I was an insurance producer. I sold insurance on my own. I was a 130, 140% contract. I bought leads. I did dinner signs. I'll show you a couple pictures here in a second. But I started enjoying being able to set my own schedule, be able to make my own money, call, uh, call my own shots, be my own boss. I love the life insurance industry. However, 19, uh, 2009, 2010, 2011, I saw the strength because I went through the 01.com bubble, 08, 09, uh, re, uh, great, how many guys have lived through the Great Recession? 08, 09, you see all the real estate property and everybody losing money with a 401k turned to a 201k and people losing equity in the house. And they owed more money in the house than actual property was worth. You guys remember those days? 08, 09. And I saw the life insurance products that you and I sell have zero effect. Two recessions. I saw the insurance policies you and I sell, zero effect. I'm like, holy moly. But 2010, 2011, I was sick and tired of having to buy leads and do dinner summers for people to do business with me. So I, I share with you, get your mind right, because whatever financial goals that you wanted to establish in your life, guess what? You found the right industry, and more specifically, you found the right platform. Had I started with this type of platform when I first started my career, I'd be so far much ahead. I was talking to Frankie Lillijohn, he picked me up from the airport. Obviously, the one that picks me up in the airport is obviously doing something. Where's Frankie at? Frank, so Lillijohn and I were talking, right? We were talking. 26 year old uh, uh, young man, single, no kids. I said, bro, date your business. Please, if you're gonna screw something, screw your business. <laughs> Between 20 and 30 years old, I screwed it up because my mind wasn't right. Here's the thing, money's gonna come your way. You do this business, it's by default money's gonna come your way. Right, Jason? Money's gonna come your way. Money's gonna come your way. This is one of those businesses where you ain't gotta be smart. <laughs> you ain't gotta be a tell, right, right? You ain't gotta be a dentist to make a quarter million bucks in this business. It's just common sense. And instead of using your hands, you gotta use your head. That's why step number one, becoming a millionaire, you gotta get your mind right. You have to say, with all the socioeconomic upbringing, family anchors I had with money, I was probably raised in this language called broken knees. <laughs> you know what broken knees sounds like? You're going in a, you're going in a grocery store, put that back. <laughs> we ain't got no money, are you crazy? We ain't got no money for that. What about in, 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 in the wintertime in Chicago? Shut the door. We're trying to heat up the whole damn neighborhood. <laughs> Speaking of Chicago, it's cold outside. Guess what the back, the, the back porch serves as? It's another refrigerator, <laughs> right? You just gotta make sure nobody steals your food back there. <laughs> Turn off the water. You know how expensive the water bill is? Turn off the lights. You see this, are you paying the electric bill? Yeah, yeah, were you raising that language? Yeah? How many of you guys are raising that language? Yeah? How, how many of you all by the time you're 16 years old, you already had bad credit? <laughs> I didn't, ma, 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 how do I have a bill through AT&T? <laughs> I thought, ma, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? Because yes. parents use your social security number to get approved. You're 14 years old, and you didn't realize you had a car. 
You know what I'm talking about? Who used my credit? Because he had fresh credit at 14, 15, 16 years old. So get your mind right. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Pretty interesting, right? So my challenge to you, if you're on Instagram, send me up something that you're putting on your phone, a vision board, a picture, a mortgage amount, a car, a car payment that you say, I am going to beat this, I'm gonna make this. It's in your vision board. Send me a screenshot at me at Money Smart Guy, and I'll reshare that in my IG stories. I wanna know that you're building your identity to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Step number two, you gotta show up and show out. You have to be active in your own financial rescue. Listen, the government ain't here to help you out. I'm gonna, government doesn't care if you become a millionaire. They're not gonna send you a million, they might send you a stimulus check or an unemployment check, but not send you checks so therefore you can be a cash flow millionaire. That's why you have to show up and show out to everything. What am I talking about? Let's check out this clip. Show up. Show up. You know what's funny? We've had three different, four different hierarchies come to Oak Brook the last, I don't know, 90 days? Ali, like the last 90 days? Multiple hierarchies coming because this office are starting to open back up again. You know, kind of like this. We, we have socially distant type process and protocol within inside Oak Brook. We have 12, first of all, our office is 12,000 square feet. So we got a lot of room. We got a lot, a lot of latitude. And so the hierarchies are coming by and all of them had the same question because they want to shadow what I do. Who's in the office next to you? Who's in, who's in these three offices next to you? You know what I say? My MDs. But they're never, <laughs> you'll love this one. But they're, right Ken? They're never here. I'm here though. Like, hello number two, build your damn identity. They made it to MD and then what Matt, right? That's done. They made it to six figures, done. They out earned their identity. They're okay. By the way, isn't it funny? Isn't it funny that in this business, you can screw it all up, have some of the work, worst work habits, and still make six figures. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? You can screw up 250. <laughs> How'd you do that? Don't know. It's a, fun, it's a funny thing. Why? Because the industry is already wealthy. You sell a policy. One of my, one of my, what, one of my newest guys, one of my newest marketing directors, he says, Matt, I need you to help me do a rollover. Well, first of all, I need you to help me do a rollover. Come to find out based on unpacking the conversation, based on FLS, we do it over Zoom. Come to find a guy who had like $1,000 in account. He's like, bro, I didn't even realize my boy had that much money in his account. It's because we know how to ask the right questions, right? A long time with me uh, selling life insurance, my life insurance license, I can, I can sell, you know, with my eyes closed. Anyway, my, make a long story short, my new marketing director, so, so somebody bust out a calculator right quick. Who's got, who's got a calculator? Quick, quick, quick. Calculator, calculate, calculate. So I'm, I'm actually asking to be only split 25%, okay? That's just, that's just me though, okay? Because I just kind of came in and I was, I was kind of like the iron hand in the velvet glove. I didn't really set up the appointment. I didn't really, you know, get involved. I just kind of was like smooth in the process. So I don't think I earned the other 25%, which is normally a 50-50 split. So I just said, I said, you just take 75 and take 25. So in 30 minutes, he made 6,750 bucks. Bro, I mean, what, what, do you, what do you do for 30 minutes? Make six grand, legally. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Well, welcome to financial services. Now here's the thing, unless you built number two up, guess, who he's gonna, guess what this MD's probably, if you didn't build up number two, guess what this MD's probably gonna do for the next 30 days? Wait, yeah, yeah, let me show up at six o'clock in the office. That's the sad part about this. Watch out when you don't respect your business. It's gonna pay you just enough to kind of like be existing. But you respect your business. Guess what's gonna to start to happen? It's gonna overpay you. So question for you, EIB, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna be the type of person that shows up at four, five, six o'clock in, 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 the, in the afternoon, still make $75,000, $100,000? But you, you guys told me you wanna become first generation cash flow millionaires, right? Well, guess what? First thing in the morning, man. And you got to determine what that is every day. For us, it's nine o'clock. Some of us at eight o'clock. Why nine o'clock for us? Because we still like to enjoy dropping off our kids at school. Every day I'm dropping off my kids at school. I love that process. I want my kids knowing that daddy picked or dropped off the kids up, 
drop their kids off every day at school. We had a little prayer. I had a little my affirmations for them. We do a little thing before they go into the rest of the world. And I want them to remember that process. Their daddy's programming them to operate differently amongst the classroom, amongst their peers. Why? Because I drop them off. Guys, I can't remember when my parents dropped me off at school. How many, how many guys never remember your parents dropped me off at school? Like, go to school, I'll, uh, I'm already at the house. Right? But uh, ha have a key around your neck. That's it. So, number three is showing up. Showing up in, in the office, showing up on Zoom. And by the way, just not showing up on Zoom with your camera off. <laughs> and showing up on Zoom, hi, I'm walking around, this, this, coffee. Lord forbid you uh, take that Zoom with you to the bathroom and you forget that everybody can see you. <laughs> that, that happened to me a couple of times, man. I was like, yo, you know, thank goodness it was number two. <laughs> yes. I was in a seating position, so I can just, you know, anyway. Hey, money smart guy makes a lot of mistakes. Okay. Field, you show up in the field. At, at, at 9, 10 o'clock at night, are you still willing to go that extra mile? Are you showing up on the scoreboard? What's our scoreboard? Lears Bolton, is EIB willing to show up on the scoreboard? Yes. You got to be present and you got to compete. You got to be present, you got to compete every stinking day. Watch what happens. It's a very cool part to run any business, let alone this business, from a position of purpose and passion. Because you can say what you really want to say, because you don't care if you lose a customer, because you're saying the honest truth to them. I was on close that night. I said, listen, Avery, Avery, uh, you knew me from eight years ago. Now you call me, like hit me on Insta. And uh, now you want to come back. But you want to tell me, you want to tell me I need to wait till my paycheck on Friday. How many of you guys ever get that? Yeah, I got paid. You tell me you're grown and you don't have money in your checking account? Uh, li listen, you, you know what I've never heard people complain? Uh, I've never heard a crack addict say, I ain't got the money. I never heard an alcoholic say, dog, I'm, I'm tapped. <laughs> I gotta wait till the third to get my fix. I can't, I gotta wait till the third to get my mad dog 20 twan twan, right? I gotta wait till the third to get my thunder chicken, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I gotta wait till the third to get my OE8 ball. I gotta wait till the paycheck. Uh, a gambler, you never ever hear a gambler say, y'all, do, I, I don't got it. Guess what a gambler does? They find it. The, the least amount of complainers, sadly, are addicts. You're telling me, Avery, you're about to be out hustled by an addict? How come you're not addicted to your success? I'm not getting out hustled by an addict. At least this addiction is a benefit. At least this addiction is a blessing. So if I'm going to be addicted, I'd rather be addicted to be of a better service to others versus being selfish with my addiction. By the way, there's some form of weird addiction in all of us, whether it's visible or behind closed doors. There's some form of addiction behind us. I'd rather express that addiction to something that's positive. So that's what I mean by showing up. Show up and show out. If you want to be a first generation cash flow winner. We have an internal saying within inside our organization when it comes to contests and qualifying events. We always say qualify for everything because your life changes by the power of associations around you, around people that, that think bigger, that vibrate at a different energy standpoint and intentionality, your life will change if you qualify for everything. So how? Well, that's step number three. You gotta build your daily disciplines. You see what separates millionaires versus somebody making 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a year, where I came from, the United States Marine Corps, was daily disciplines, uh, how we think about money, now we apply ourselves to the things that we're learning to acquire wealth, success, money, prosperity, and obviously happiness. It's how disciplined millionaires are on a day-to-day -day basis that most people are. What am I talking about? Let's check this out. You wanna be a first generation cash flow millionaire guy? You gotta have daily disciplines. Daily. Did I say weekly? No. Daily. 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 One of the things that Patrick told me when I first started Bay Shop Building, he says, Paul, you're on, you're, you're, you're nice, you got a nice momentum going on. You're in a nice momentum going on. Good, good, keep going, keep going. He goes, so Paula, I just need you to worry about one thing. What's that, PBD? Don't get bored. What do you mean to get bored? Freaking making $100,000 a year. It's 2015. What do you mean we get bored? I'm making $250,000 a year. Three years later, asking that question. PBD on a dream team call. PBD, three years ago, you told me in Bay Shop Building to not get 
bored. I got to ask, what do you mean? I have no clue what you're talking about. I was looking for to get bored somehow, some way. But you know, every day, there's always a new personality. Every day, there's a new set of top 25 lists I got to call. Every day, I got to deal with somebody else's family, and it reminds me of my family. Every day, I got to deal with somebody in my neighborhood. It reminds me of the neighborhood I grew up in. Every day, I got to deal with somebody on the opposite side of my, where I used to be at for a good majority of my life. It's always fun, PBD. I, 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 what are you talking about? Get bored. Back to number two. Guess what I started building? My identity. Because I didn't rest my success on titles or cash flow. My son took it from me, but I usually have this wristband called the power of broke. Remember I was talking about the Dubai story? I mean, there, there's, been, there's been things that has happened in our life that I don't, I don't share uh, because I don't feel like, I, uh, you know, complaining about it brings the right attention to it. I don't put a status update. I don't, I don't verbalize it. Guys and gals, we're a blended family. Do you think there's drama in that? Yeah. But you just don't verbalize it. I, I came out the military. I used to jump, I used to jump out of helicopters. I have two uh, uh, torn patella tendons, 40%. I never got it operated on. I got this thing called stenosis in my lower back, L4, L5. Guess what I, I don't do about it? Complain. I find the solution, and I work through the rehab, and I fix it. In the meantime, I bust, bust my tail and make, make, make the best of it by showing up and having daily disciplines. By the way, uh, uh, was it, uh, um, who, who was making fun of me? Uh, um, Webb. Where's Webb at? Yeah, he was making fun of me because, he, hey, Matt, you were so skinny in, the, in, those, in those pictures. <laughs> you know why? I was seriously in this condition called gout. You know what gout is? I had gout. By the way, I still got it. I'm just, I just manage it now. Well managed. But I got this thing called gout. It's a Filipino curse. Polynesian curse. If you ever had anybody got gout, it is, whoo! Man, they said, don't eat steak, don't drink wine. It's not gonna happen in my life. <laughs> so what I gotta do to fix it? We well, gotta take this drug. No problem. I've been, taking the, I've been taking the drug now for the last three, four years because I got the right medical care because I showed up with daily disciplines. I'm not gonna let my lack of discipline limit me. Sometimes we have these things operate in our life that actually end up crowding silently and slowly around us. Next thing you know, we're boxed in. Physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally. We're boxed in. We don't even realize it. Why? Because we lacked the discipline. If you don't get discipline, the situation that you're in will discipline you. You got to choose who you want to be in control. Your situation or you. And obviously your maker if you believe in that. But if you, you're going to be put in a situation of running a business, leading people, helping people with their finances, the responsibility, and the honor for us to have to be able to do that, you have to have daily disciplines. So back to the IG idea on Instagram. Are you using Instagram stories just to showboat? Or are you using it as a self-disciplined way to show, hey man, I'm showing up, showing out, I'm building my identity, and I'm improving my daily disciplines. Are you using your Instagram stories to influence and attract those like-minded people too just as well? That's a thought. That's a marketing idea. That's something that you might want to consider if you really want to venture towards this journey of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. You know, there's a saying out there that you don't need to be in jail to be in prison. So what imprisons us? Our mindset, our attitude. And when we're thinking about the daily disciplines, identity of showing up and showing out, we got to find ourselves in a complete different position of associations because our associations is everything. If you hang around people that are thinking broke, they speak in broken knees, and every time an opportunity comes up, they think broke, they're never accomplishing anything in their life, guess what's going to happen to you? Same thing. But if you challenge yourself to qualify for trips and to invest in events, to invest in things that grow you, I know it's going to be uncomfortable. Did you think that the journey becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is supposed to be comfortable? See, everybody wants the results, but a lot of people don't want to do the work. See, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire means you are doing it for the very first time. You know, we have a saying here, you know, it takes one person, a family's generation, to change that family name forever. My question to you is, is that going to be you? Or are you going to be building up and passing on the same old, same old? And if you want to change your current set of circumstances, you got to fight to position yourself to be in winning environments. And by the way, next week, we're going to be in Louisville, Kentucky, where we're getting our guys to be surrounded 
with some of the winners in their industry, winners in their field, winners in their specialty. We're going to surround our guys with financial insurance experts, sales experts, entrepreneur experts, mindset values and principles experts and centers of influence. Why? Because we want our guys to start thinking bigger and expecting more out of their life. That's why we created this channel called the Seven Figure Squad. So therefore you can find a virtual home here online through our YouTube channel. For those who want to think bigger, expand your vision and find the steps necessary to get you to the next level of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. So we hope you learned something today and you start implementing right now. And with that being said, guys, here's a couple other videos I'd love for you to check out if you're game for it. Number one is five mindset hacks by my mentor, CEO, founder, PHP agency, and author of the book, Your Next Five Moves, also the host of the number one channel online for entrepreneurs called Valuetainment. Patrick Bet David, watch this video where I took my guys to be surrounded by him in our corporate home office in Dallas, Texas. And the other one is a video to help you build confidence like a millionaire. Because one thing to go out and venture, it's one thing to be out there, out in the open, exposed, because nobody in your family or friends have ever been in this type of journey because you're speaking differently, reacting differently, so you need confidence. So please check out this video. That being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't done so already, drop your thoughts, drop your comments, and drop your follow-up questions in the comments section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, well, that's a wrap. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.